What Jesus Said About Unclean Spirits Now when the unclean spirit comes out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came, and when it comes, it finds it occupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they come in and live there, and the last condition of that person becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. Matthew 12, verses 43 to 45. In context, the main point of Jesus was the seriousness of rejecting him completely as the religious leaders had done. However, the illustration reveals some interesting principles of demon possession and the fact that Jesus considered it a real phenomenon, not just a contemporary superstition. After Jesus met the challenge of the scribes and Pharisees about giving them a sign to prove that he was the Messiah and his historical rebuke of their lack of faith, he returned to the topic of evil spirits. Jesus lets us know that the demon passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Although we are unsure what Jesus means by waterless places, but from the context, it seems to apply to being in a state of not being in a man. This may allude us to the fact that a human body majorly consists of water. As it passes through these waterless places without inhabiting a human, the unclean spirit cannot find rest. The rest it is seeking appears to be to possess another man to torment. Demons, at least some of them, seem to seek a human host, seeing an empty space as an invitation. Popular Bible commentator Matthew Paul stated, The devil cannot be at rest where he hath no mischief to do to men. When it does not find rest, the restless unclean spirit says, possibly to itself, I will return to my house from which I came. Having left a man, the demon returns to his house the man, to find rest. We read, I will return to my house. Charles Spurgeon says about this, The foul fiend calls the man my house. His audacity is amazing. He did not build or buy that house, and he has no right to it. We read, Unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Spiritually, he is vacant and unoccupied. To indicate that the man is ready for reoccupation, Jesus says the house is swept and put in order. His house is prepared to be moved into once again. This shows that in the spiritual battle, you have to pick a side. There is no neutral side. There are forces that oppose individuals and will only respond and flee to a stronger dweller. In spite of this, the unclean spirit doesn't immediately enter as we might expect. It goes and takes seven spirits who are more wicked than itself with it, and they enter and then they all possess the man together. Perhaps this restless demon who has been expelled once recruits reinforcements to better ensure his ability to remain in possession of this house. Instead of being agitated by one unclean spirit, the man is now afflicted with eight evil spirits. As Jesus points out, that man's last state became worse than his first. It is terrible for a man to be the host of one demon. However, being the host of eight is worse than being the host of one. Afterward, Jesus compares this demon-possessed man to the present generation of evil. Jesus also makes the point that having a clean house and orderly space is nothing to a demon if there is no one protecting that house. The fact that Jesus cast out demons showed us that Jesus is more powerful than unclean spirits. Even the disciples using his name cast out evil spirits. Mark 3 verse 27, New American Standard Bible But no one can enter the strong man's house and plunder his property 
unless he first ties up the strong man, and then he will plunder his house. His miracles signified the downfall of Satan. Satan is the strong man. The house is his dominion. He is the god of this age. His goods are the people over whom he holds sway. Jesus is the one who binds Satan and plunders his house. The allegory prompts us to remember the prologue, where John announced that one who was more powerful than he would come. It turns out that he is also stronger than Satan. Matthew 10 verse 1 Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out and heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. The passage is parabolic in nature, drawing on real-life situations to tell a story to make a point. It has relevance for the generation as a whole because it is instructive for individuals as well. Both the Old and the New Testaments mention evil spirits, but they are also referred to as unclean spirits or impure spirits, deceiving spirits or lying spirits, demonic spirits and demons. Evil demons are always malevolent supernatural beings. Evil spirits work against God, but the Bible also tells us that in His sovereignty, God can choose to use evil spirits to carry out his plans and purposes, demonstrating that he is the supreme ruler of the universe. While evil spirits exist as part of the hierarchy of evil, with Satan as their leader, they lack the ability to completely reject God's rule. Ephesians 6 verse 12 For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places.